Hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to model a very simple butterfly from nothing but a 2D image, which I'm gonna provide in the description below. So you can download this image, I'm gonna show you where to do that. And then essentially in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you how to simply model it using some very basic modeling techniques into this butterfly here. Now this is by no means something that you're gonna be seeing really up close. This is just a quick dirty asset that you can kind of knock together if you need it, maybe like a butterfly as an element in a scene. And you can see here, this is an example of what I made out of this. And it took me something like 25 minutes. Now I'm not gonna be showing how I made the animation, but I will kind of go through it a little bit, how I set things up. But this is really, really basic. The modeling especially is really basic and easy. And we're just taking advantage of a photo as a simple reference and adding some basic modifiers. So I hope you guys enjoy this butterfly tutorial on how to make this. And I'll also be putting this um, blend file, including the animation here onto my Patreon. So if you guys wanna check that out. So uh, let's get into this um, fun little butterfly tutorial. So before we actually get started with this tutorial, you obviously want to download the image that we're going to be working with. You can use any butterfly, but I found one that's really good and it's free. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below. So it's on uh, pec cells. You can see it's just this really nice picture of a butterfly, but really you could do this with any butterfly. Just make sure you get a nice um, forward looking shot. Ideally, you could get one from a butterfly at the top and the bottom. Um, it adds a little bit more realism. Depends on where the camera is going to be viewing it from. But for this tutorial, something like this will give us a lot to work with. So just go ahead and you know download whatever size you want there. So with me, I've downloaded my image here. Just for example, I've put it on my desktop. And what we're going to do, we have a new scene open up in Blender. So I'm using Blender 3.0 over here. I'm just going to hit A to select everything and X and just delete. So we've deleted all of our default items. And what I like to do is I just like to, you know, drag my window to the side. I'm just going to go into my front or graphic view. I just like to take my image and just drag it simply into the um, Blender viewport. So you just drag it in and you can see it's added in as an image plane here like that. Now with that selected, you can simply go G, Y and move it back on the Y. So we're moving it back on the Y a little bit. Just so when we go into our front view and we model something over here, it's not embedded in the image here. Now there are a lot of different ways you can go about modeling this. And I know Blender has a whole bunch of new notation tools now. You can draw out geometry and stuff. But for me, I'm just gonna do it old school. I'm just gonna go Shift A. And I'm just simply gonna go to my mesh here and I'm gonna add in a plane. So I'm just gonna add in a plane. And you can see here we've got a plane. I'm just gonna tab to go into edit mode. So hit tab key and we're in edit mode now with that active and with all of this geometry you know active as you can see we're gonna go r x nine zero and hit enter and in fact let's just really let's just select you know three of these verts so just these three vertices here this is hit x and just delete those verts so what we have here is just one single vert that is left and we're simply going to take that and we're going to go g and just move it down to where the wing is here so you can see We've got one single little vertex here. And now what we're gonna do is we're putting it down here into wing and we're just gonna go E to extrude in our front of graphic view. And depending on the amount of detail you want, you can kind of make it closer or further apart, but I'm just gonna go with little extrusions like this. We can always give it a sub subdivision surface modifier, but just roughly keeping it in the out outside part of this. We're just in our front view, continually hitting E to extrude and just moving it up a little bit. And I know there are a lot of other ways you could do this, but just something like this, just hitting E to extrude, moving it along and over here. Now, when it comes to these little parts here, you could get in here and do little details by doing little extrusions. But for me, I'm just gonna keep the gaps big like this. As long as it's roughly in place, that's all we really want. It doesn't have to be um, like precisely like this. So I'm extruding down here, you know, not overdoing it, just simple little extrusions all the way down. And for me, this is something I find quite relaxing and meditative. So I don't really mind the process. It's just kind of fun following a pattern like this. Now, there are two different ways you can do this. And I'll quickly show you. With my original butterfly here, you can see the wing is actually just made out of two parts like this that I did. But if you wanted to, at this point here, if you want it to be simpler, you could just extrude this vert further down this way. But for me, I'm gonna make two little sections because that's actually what a butterfly has. This might look like one wing, but it actually is two two wing sections. So if this vert's still active here, as you can see that vert down the bottom, we're gonna go E to extrude and we're just gonna extrude it 
for this bottom section. You can kind of see where it goes, just extruding it and coming close to where we started. And you can see here is our original vert. So we're just gonna select that one and the original vert. So we've got those two active. And we're just gonna hit F and that's gonna fill it. Now what we can do is we can hit A to select everything. And we're gonna go E to extrude. S to scale and just scale it a little bit, not too much. And then if you go Control F with that, all those verts still selected, Control F, we can go grid fill. Now, if it doesn't do it, it's because we don't have an even amount of verts. So all you can do is come in here to one of these edges and go Control R, double click, just add in an extra cut. And now if you go Shift Alt and you left click on an edge here, it'll loop select these verts. And if you now go Control F, or Command F, you can go Grid Fill, and it should fill that in. Now you can come here to the Grid Fill option and you can mess around with the span and the offset and stuff till it kind of makes sense. But for me, this is kind of okay for what we're doing. So with that all still active, I'm just gonna go to my Smooth tool, drag the little gizmo and just kind of smooth that out. And there you go. There we have that. Now you could just fill the whole thing in as one face and not have it um, with all of this geometry here, but if you wanted to deform the wing, that geometry is gonna matter, especially if you also wanna add a subdivision surface modifier. So you can see now we made one really simple wing, and if you wanted to, you could just you know select this, you can go Shift D, duplicate it, rotate it, and once again, I'm still in my front um, orthographic view, and then you can come here and enable your proportional editing, select verts and then go G and move them. And if you roll your middle mouse button, you can control the fall off. You can also come here and make it connected only. So it only affects the connected mesh and you can select the verts and you can just move them around. And this is kind of like a quick and dirty way of doing it. And if you're just trying to make something like a butterfly, it's just gonna be in the background, you're not gonna see it up close. Something like this really is fine because it's not gonna be a close up macro shot. And that's kind of what my project was that I was intending, so I didn't really care. This is just about getting a quick and dirty result. And what we can do is we can just, with any one of these verts selected, hit Control L, and that's just gonna select this geometry by itself. And then we can go G, Y, and just move it down a bit, just so it's not intersecting. So there we have the wing. So I'm gonna quickly show you something really cool. Now, what we can do to give it that wing texture, we can quickly go to our modifiers, or sorry, our materials. So go to your materials tab, and then click on new, and let's just call this, uh, let's just say uh, BF for butterfly, okay? Whatever you want to call it. Then we're gonna come over here to our base color, click on this little tab here, and let's just give that an image texture. Now, if we come to the drop down, we can click on that Pexels, Pixabay image, whatever, just click on it. The butterfly one we dragged in, it should be available here because we dragged our reference image in. And now you're not gonna see anything, but if you hit Z and you go materials, um, you still won't see it, but what you gotta quickly do now is just go to your UV editing. And once again, just hit Z, make sure you're in your material preview, then hit A to select all of this geometry. And then in your front view, if you hit U and you go project from view, it's gonna project it. And now over here, you just simply select the geometry and you can go S to scale it up, G to move it, and just kind of match it up to the wing. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit smaller than it was originally, as long as none of these parts here are st sticking over. And you should be able to see over here, because we went Z and we went material preview, we now have that. You can tab out of edit mode, and there you have a wing. Pretty cool. And on top of that, if you wanted to, you could just add a solidify modifier to give it a little bit of thickness. So you can mess around with that. You can also give it a subdivision surface modifier and you can also go to object and enable shades, move on that. So now you have a really, really simple wing. So let's quickly go back to our layout. And if in case you were wondering, maybe, okay, so if you get any of this weird shading stuff going on here, like I do over here, just come in here to edit mode, hit A to select everything and then go Alt N and then just go recalculate outside and it'll fix any of that normal issues. So now, as you can see here, we have the wing. So if we, if we wanted to mirror this, all we have to go is go to our modifiers and just give it a mirror modifier. Now, because we started off with a plane and we just deleted all of the verts in edit mode, our origin point, which is this orange dot in the middle, and you can see that by going up here, making sure origins is enabled, that is right in the middle. So when we add a mirror modifier to that, it's perfectly mirrored on the X axis here, which is what we want. So if you hit Z now and you go material preview, you can see our wings. 
So that was really simple. We've now made some wings pretty easy. Don't worry about it not matching up with the background image exactly, but let's quickly make the body. So let's just quickly select a wing and let's hit H to hide it. So we're hitting H and let's make the, the insect body. It's even simpler. So we're gonna go Shift A, just add in a cube and we're gonna hit Z and we're gonna go into wireframe. Then we're gonna go S to scale that cube down. And don't worry about it being exactly in the middle, just kind of, in fact, select your image in the background and then hit G to move it. And just move it and try and get it in the middle of that cube and also hit R to rotate it. And just roughly line that guy up like that. Then we're gonna select the cube, tab into edit mode. And in wireframe, we're just gonna select these verts here and we can go S to scale them. E to extrude to the neck, scale. E to extrude. S to scale that, and an E to extrude, just this little bit here, S to scale, and let's just select the side of the face here, just these faces here, and let's just go E to extrude, S to scale, G to move them in, and just move this guy out. So we're just making a really basic little uh, model like this, and let's just grab these faces here. In our front view, let's go E to extrude, S to scale, and just drag these guys out, just kind of roughly matching it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now you can see if you go to your side view, it's a little bit skewed. So you can just select face here, move it out a bit, just give it some thickness. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to roughly build this. So grab that, bring that out a bit. Go to your vert select and just bring this out. Spend as much time as you want just kind of making it look like the head. And then go back to your front orthographic view, hit Z, go to wireframe. And let's just select half of the, these verts here and let's go S, X, 0 and hit enter. Then we're gonna go G, X and just move them in a bit. And now let's go to add and under our modifiers and let's just give it a mirror modifier. And you can see now it's mirrored. And while we have those faces active in there, let's hit X and delete faces. And now make sure clipping is enabled on our mirror. Just select all of these verts and then go G, X and move them over till they all kind of clip together. So now I have it perfectly mirrored. Let's select these bottom verts. E to extrude, S to scale, move them in a bit. And then just work your way down like this. E to extrude one more time down to here and then S to scale. G to move it and just bring it in a little bit. So all we've created is something like this doesn't have to be perfect. Let's give it a subdivision surface modifier, just move it out. Then tab out to object mode and let's go to object and enable shade smooth. And now let's just go over to our materials, come to the drop down and give it that butterfly material. And now if we're gonna go to our UV editing workspace. In edit mode here, select everything by hitting A. And then we're gonna go U, project from view in our front orthographic view. And then once again over here, just select the geometry S to scale and then move it around. You can also rotate it and just try and match it up to the reference here. So something like that should be fine. And then you can also come over here at the top, enable proportional editing and you can select the verts. Hit G and you can just use the proportional editing tool to move it over here in this workspace till it all matches up here. And as long as you hit Z and you go material preview, you should be able to see it over here. Now from the side, you're gonna get a lot of the stretching, but that's okay. We're not really going for something that's super realistic. We're keeping it um, just as kind of like a background element, something that at a quick glance would look like a real butterfly. So now let's go back to our layout. And now we can go Alt H and unhide the rest of the butterfly. If we hit Z and we go material preview, you can see it's starting to look like something we wanna see. So let's quickly select the butterfly and let's just go G, Y and just move it forward a bit like that. Now that's all looking pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to make the antennae, as you can see here in the butterfly, you can simply just go into your edit mode there with the butterfly, simply just select one of these faces on the eye and then go Shift D to duplicate it, right click to let go. And then go E to extrude just a little bit and then E to extrude that face a little bit more. And then just move it in your front view, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, just make a little thing like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, just little extrusions. And then you can take those, go back to your UV editing, 
and then just select the whole thing, the whole antennae. Then you can go you project from view and then you can just take the whole thing over here and instead of trying to line that all up with that antenna there, you can just simply take it along here somewhere, scale it down and rotate it and just try and match it up with one of these veins here. And that should look believable enough. And you can tab out, back into your layout. And now if we hit Z and we go material preview, we have something that looks like that. Pretty cool. And now you can grab your wings and you can go to edit mode. Just select all of the geometry and now you can kind of rotate them a little bit, move them back a little bit and just try to make it look a little bit more natural. And that's how you make a butterfly. So it looks pretty cool. And you can, like I said, you can spend as much time as you want um, perfecting this, um, you know, extra extruding things a little bit nicer, but just for a really quick basic model that you can like have sitting somewhere in the background. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'm quickly gonna, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just quickly jump into my original here. And I, and this is the exact same method I use here, but I just spent a little bit more time refining things. And you can see this is my butterfly here. And what I did to animate it is super simple. I originally, to make the wings be part of the butterfly, I simply selected the wings and I held in shift and selected the body. And then I just went control P and I made it object keep transform. So when I grabbed the insect body here, you can see the wings are following along. Then what I did is I selected the wings and I just went over to my shape keys and I added um, two shape keys, so a basis and then my first shape key here. I went into edit mode and I just kind of moved geometry around with the um, proportional editing tool to make it kind of look like a flap. And then I just used this value slider here and I animated it. And I went over to my animation here and I added some under my animation curves. If I quickly get that, quickly go to my graph editor here. I, you can see here I added a noise generator to that um, shape key and to get this kind of random flapping thing going on here. So very simple kind of way of doing this without having to do too much work. And then I just grabbed the body here and I just added a little bit of rotation animation to it just to kind of make it look like, like this. So just a really quick and dirty little animation. And then I just duplicated the butterflies, put them in the background, added some of these glowing balls and added the background. Super basic stuff. All of this honestly took me like 25 minutes to put this little animation together. And the whole process of making this butterfly here is exactly what I just showed you guys in this tutorial. So that's how I did it. It's a super simple way of getting this asset made. And I'm interested to see what you guys are able to make with this. So um, that being said, I am also making this um, file here available on my Patreon. So this is my original one that comes with the animation, but you guys don't have to get it if you want. Um, even just following along with this basic tutorial here will get you some pretty good results. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If this is something that isn't really your interest, you can always check out some of my other tutorials. I really do cover stuff like shape keys, animation and modeling in more detail. Um, so definitely check out some of my other stuff. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.